the hits. Here we go, we got the beat going. Chaos. There you go, there's old Madonna. So it's Claire, it is ten past one, and I have Hugh and Mercedes with me from Momentum World, uh, European Solidarity Corps. Hello, you two. Hi. How are you Hello. doing? So do you two know each other? I think through email correspondence. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you certainly haven't met, met up recently, that's for sure, eh? <laughs> that's, yeah, definitely. I've just heard on the... Did you, I don't know if you were listening to the news, but I think it looks like we're going to be wearing masks, which is no bad thing, I think. You know, I think perhaps that's what we should be doing anyway. But anyway, that's the sidetrack. Uh, Hugh, tell me who you are and what, what it's all about. Um, I'm Hugh. I'm uh, 19. I'm a second-year undergraduate student at the University of Warwick. Okay. Um, I'm the chair of Alive UK. Uh, we're a Scottish charity. We're also a solidarity project of the European Solidarity Corps. Um, and we advocate for and support local youth forums across Scotland and other parts of the UK. Okay. And are you, are you, are you at uni now or are you working from home? Um, well, at the moment, um, I'm. this would be a summer holidays, but I'm back up oh, in Scotland. Of course, yeah. Right. yeah. So, yeah. And um, Mercedes, what about you? So, yeah, I'm Mercedes and I'm one of the UK programme managers for the European Solidarity Corps. So I work for the UK National Agency for European Solidarity Corps and Erasmus Plus. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I am currently also working from home at the moment yeah. uh, due to lockdown restrictions, but it's all good. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I oversee a lot of different opportunities within the programme. And I think that Hugh Scotland has been stricter, hasn't it? It's been, uh, it's been stricter than the UK, I think. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned masks. Uh, we masks have been mandatory in shops and sort of public spaces from the 10th of July for us. So we're a bit earlier than you. Um, but, so but, yeah. what if you do? So you know, when you say mandatory, do people come and say, "Please, can you put your mask on if you're not wearing it?" Do you? I I don't think there's. I'm not sure where they stand legally. I'm not sure. No, I, think you, I... I don't think you can be. Um, it's not like a, an offence or anything. Yeah, you can't be forced. I'm to not do sure it. what statistics in terms of uh, sort of compliance with it is. I think Nicholas Sturgeon said it, it was very good anecdotally. I'm not sure if there's any yeah, sort of... Yeah. But it's an expectation in Scotland, and that that's how it should be, I think. And um, Mercedes, was, what has it been like in Birmingham? Um, so, I mean, for the vast majority, it was, you know, very quiet. Obviously, with the shops opening up and things like the ball ring in the centre of yeah. town, it's been a little bit busier. Yeah, yeah it's been mad. Um, yeah. But most people have been abiding by the rules and there are a lot of face masks on things like public transport, which is good to see. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think when we live in sleepy Cornwall, you know, it, we <laughs> forget what it's like in big, big cities. You know, we can't sort of comprehend what it's like in places like Birmingham because they're you know, massive compared to us. You know, Truro mm -hmm. is our biggest, is our city and it's tiny. So uh, we, don't, we don't appreciate what it's like in the big cities. What, Mercedes, what is the European Solidarity Corps? So um, the European Solidarity Corps was set up in 2018 uh, by the European Commission and essentially it's a programme that offers volunteering placements, um, traineeships for jobs and um, social action projects for young people to take part in. So it's available to young people between the ages of 18 to 30 okay. and yeah they can take part in opportunities all over Europe. Do you think, will it will it make any, I know this is a bit, I wasn't on the question, but I'm just interested, will the moving out of Brexit make any difference to anything or will it just remain the same? I guess it will just remain the same, won't it? But currently, yeah, we're in the, what's called the transition period. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll be departing from the EU um, for 2021. Um, but in terms of the programme itself, we have our last um, application round for 2020. So we have three a year. And the next one is in October. So essentially that means that organisations and young people can still apply, still take part in the programme. And for those projects that extend into 2021 and beyond, then there's still placements there for people to go on. OK. And tell us a bit about, I'm going to get, I'm going to come back to you, uh, Mercedes, and ask you a bit yeah, more sure. about projects and stuff. But just wanted you to tell us what Alive is. I'm guessing that's what yeah. it says. Yeah. So we, tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. We're a charity, uh, we're entirely youth-led and we advocate and support um, local youth forums. So we basically campaign for better structures for young yeah. people to be engaged in decision-making and sort of civil participation uh, at local authority level. Um, well, across that's the good. Country. Um, so we do a lot of, of campaigning, a lot of research and we also give out small grants to groups of young people for projects. That's really interesting. We. Um... We're looking, you know, I'd like to see more. I don't remember a time since the 70s when I was a kid that um, young people were more interested in politics and climate change and more 
more, more into activism than they are right now. And it's really interesting uh, when I talk to them. You know, they they don't want to get in. Any, they don't want to get involved in anything that's seen as too aggressive or too uh, too full. You know, they they're really clear about what they want to do. So your project has probably helps them find their sort of feet with that a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's definitely about. There's a lot of disillusionment with the sort of traditional. Yeah structures and processes so it's all yeah. about translating that sort of passion and activism into actual change and that has to sadly go through normal like voting it goes through local authorities yeah. it's public authorities so there needs to be sort of a bridge between those two groups do you think we'll ever um do you think we'll ever get i think we should but do you think we'll ever get to the point where they bring the voting down to 16 i absolutely think they should if you're old enough to leave school then you should be old enough to have a say in what happens in the in oh. the grown-up world couldn't agree more. So Scotland's had it since 2014. Really? I, Wales, I didn't know that. We had it since the independence referendum. Wow. Um, and I, Wales, it just came into force two or three days ago, the legislation. So young people in Wales from the age of 16 are unfranchised too. That's I think it's amazing. fantastic. Uh-huh. And do they vote? Do you know? Do, you know, I, it's new, isn't it? I guess they haven't got... It's new, so people haven't got into the swing of it yet, I guess. It's still in that sort of storming yeah. stage. We had a really, really good turnout for the 2014 independence referendum. Yeah. And similar ones even for local elections um, and like Scottish parliamentary ones, I, I think we're going quite well as well. Um, and in terms of like inertia, so if you vote once, you're more likely to vote again. Yeah, uh, The fact definitely. that so many people have voted, the f- very first chance they had, um, it looks like it'll be, uh, we'll continue to see that going forward as well. Yeah, yeah. And how have you been involved with uh, the e- ESC? How, have, how has that sort of fitted together? Um, so when Alive UK is relatively new, we were only founded in early 2019. Um, so our first sort of big funding came from the Solidarity uh, Corps, oh, the, okay. the, 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 the Corps. So it was really exciting for us. Yeah. Um, it's a very, in terms of, um, we struggled to find funding at that time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sort of a young, entirely youth-led charity. Um, and to get funding, we got 6,000 euros. Nice. So 500 euros for 12 months. Um, for our project from the ESC, so it was really sort of game changing for us. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So, what sort of Mercedes? What sort of projects are available, and and what sort of things do you address, or you know, how does that give us an overview? I guess of the sort of things you do. So, I mean, there's three different strands to the whole program. So, there's volunteering placements where people can do volunteering um, either in country or abroad. There's yeah. traineeships and jobs, which are like occupational placements. Yeah. And then if we look at what Hugh is doing, that's um, solidarity projects. So those are essentially projects that are created and implemented by young people. Um, they're social action projects, yeah, so to yeah. say. And um, I mean, they can really like address a range of different topics. They're, they're in the local community. So it's really about young people looking at the kind of situation around them, finding a societal issue that's important to them and then trying to address it through their project activities. So there is, like, the possibilities are really endless. Yeah, I think I interviewed some girls from Norway who were doing, like, circus skills and doing kind of... uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were... It was really interesting how they... So they were all trained circus performers and they were were going around... uh, doing stuff around water and sustainability and all that sort of thing. It was really good, really good, just using what they already knew. What, um, how would somebody get involved with your, your uh, charity, Hugh? You know, what if I'm a young person in Cornwall, what do I do? What, how do I get to know well, about you? We're currently just based in Scotland. We're trying to sort of uh, okay. slip around up to the UK wide. We hope to be sort of UK wide in probably 2021, 2022. Um, but if you're a young person in Scotland and you're interested in what we do, we're going to open a call for new charity trustees yeah. in a week. So that'll be a chance to get involved with the charity itself. Um, the charity trustees are we're all under 26. That's the rule. And we decide everything for the charity from legal, financial to governance related issues. So so it's literally all run by young people. 100%. It's it's run by young people. That's great. I That's think great. we have an average age of 20. And the average age for a charity trustee in England and Wales is 61. Um, so we've been ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What is when is the next application deadline for you, Mercedes? If people wanted to kind of had a, a marvelous project that they wanted to look at getting some funding for, how would they go about that? And when is that? So the next deadline for 2020 is October the first, and um, the applications are submitted on an online portal. So those um, application forms are made available around six weeks before the deadline. Okay. So late summer and early September 
And um, yeah, if you head to our website, we have a kind of vast range of resources from how to fill out application forms, webinars, um, guidance for for setting up a project. So there's lots of different resources and materials there for people to have a look at. That sounds brilliant. And young, you know, young, it's hard to get funding for young people. It tends to be kind of for young people, you know, that you can get funding to work with young people, but it's quite hard for young people to get funding to do anything meaningful. You know, people are quite... Um, mm. I think they see young people as risky, so they don't really want to fund things that they see as risky. Do you find that? Uh, sorry, oh. Mercedes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, I think um, obviously it's really about visibility, I think, yeah. and um, yeah. young people knowing where to look. And this kind of specific strand of the core was definitely developed by the European Commission so that they could kind of put the power back into the hands yeah, of young totally. people yeah, and think... to make sure that there was change at like a grassroots level. Yeah, yeah. So what sort of things you currently sort of give us an overview of what you're currently working on, Hugh? What have you got bubbling over in uh, in a live? Well, we're currently focusing on our research. So across Scotland's 32 local authorities, there's no real sort of a framework for youth participation. Yeah. Uh, so through freedom of information, through talking to young people themselves, and through sort of informal chats with the departments or teams and local authorities, we're planning to sort of piece together a complete view of how local youth forums are supported in Scotland. Uh, so we've done this work for a wee bit. Um, we are, I think, close to doing the first stage of it. And we should have, um, we're planning to get sort of like a heat map of Scotland, which yeah. should be quite engaging. Good way to present the data. And that should be coming out the end of this year. I think Scotland is way ahead of the game. You've got, um, you've got Mary, haven't you? Mari, the, the youngest, the Mari Black, is it? Black. Yeah, Brilliant. who's young. You know, you just don't see young politicians and councillors, do you? And I think that's, that's what's got to change, hasn't it? We've got to have some young people sat on town councils and parish meetings and stuff like that they just never are it's always more the elderly that that kind of retired you know people that do that to sort of you know fill their time and stuff and i just it's such a shame because young people have got we they know what they're, they're the ones that have got to live it aren't they they're the ones that have got to live it you know and yeah you just made affect us for the, the longest absolutely. period of time absolutely um, yeah. I think um, Mercedes, you're gonna. We're gonna play a film, aren't we? Would you like to yeah. introduce the film? Just quickly, give us a little bit of, talk, you know, what it's all about and stuff. Yeah. So um, this film was created by the UK National Agency. Um, it's tried to be as user friendly and as bright and colourful as possible. Um, essentially, it gives a snapshot to each aspect of the program, um, how you can apply, what opportunities are available to young people. Okay. Well, we shall uh, show the film then, shall we? Sure. First, learn more about the core to make sure you know what you're up to. Registering is easy. We'll need to find out more about you. What are you interested in? What makes you tick? And once you're in, you can start browsing, volunteering, job and trainee opportunities right away. Remember that core opportunities are free of charge and are mostly in the field of volunteering. When you see one or more opportunities you're interested in, apply. If you succeed with your application, the organisation will send you an offer. Once you've made a positive connection with an organisation, they'll provide more details on your upcoming activity and help you with travel arrangements. Depending on activity you'll take part in, you'll be invited to a pre-departure training session to learn about what does it mean to be in the European Solidarity Corps activity and more practically on insurance, relevant agreements, pocket money and other things you need to know before you go. When the big day finally arrives, we have no doubts you'll be ready for it. Upon arrival, you'll meet your hosts, see where you'll be staying and settle in for your big adventure. You'll take part in an on-arrival training session where you'll find out about your host country, how you can develop yourself, who will support you and meet other participants. Don't worry. Mentoring, language classes and online training will help you to further adjust to your new environment and get the best out of your experience. If you stay in a foreign country for more than six months, halfway through your activity you will be invited to share your thoughts and report on your experience. Don't be shy. We want to know how you feel and what you've learned so far. After your activity, 
you're entitled to receive your Youth Pass Certificate along with a European Solidarity Corps Participation Certificate. You can use your Youth Pass when applying for new Solidarity activities or education and training or perhaps a job. But these aren't the only things you'll take home. You'll leave knowing you learned something new while doing your part to make Europe a better place. Welcome to the European Solidarity Corps. So I guess the question I, I've got for you two, I always ask people, is um, how do we get poor kids from deprived neighbourhoods who don't, I'm going to ask you first, I think, who don't travel, who don't, whose parents don't, don't see the value of traveling because they can't afford to or you know if they do travel it is a, a a holiday in spain or something like that how do we get them to be brave enough to kind of look at these projects you you know just the hard to reach how do we get them big question that is a very big question I'm not sure i've got the, the no. entire answer itself or if there is a, a silver bullet but i think um in terms of I know a lot of people look at opportunities like this, whether it's through Erasmus Plus or the ESC or other opportunities as these aren't really for me, yeah. these are for other people. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. I think if we can make sure that people understand how to apply, uh, that it's mostly, it's almost entirely free um, and all this is covered, uh, it's really accessible and there's yeah. not many barriers, I think we'll see a lot more people applying. Yeah, I agree. Um, but that's an ongoing process, I think. Yeah, I think. And I think, Mercedes, the problem I find here in the neighbourhoods, there's lots of, Cornwall's a very beautiful county, but there's lots of poor areas that are just as poor as anywhere else, just as poor as parts mm -hmm. of Birmingham or parts of Scotland. It's just because it's so beautiful, you people don't kind of make that connection that they're poor. Um, it's really hard to get them to, it, it, you know, to, they, they almost feel like this is the sort of, these are the sort of things that university students do or gap year people do. And actually your courses are available to everyone, aren't they? So, you know, anyone can apply as long as they yeah. are in the age bracket. Yeah, I mean, if you're between 18 and 30, then you're free to apply. But yeah, I think it's just changing a mindset and the, yeah. the programme has been developed around the concept of inclusion. Um, so we do offer additional support um, to people with fewer opportunities. And we do class things like a geographical obstacle, such as isolation or growing up in a rural area, as being one of those obstacles. Um, I myself grew up in a rural area and t I took part in the programme. There was a complete lack of youth services where I grew up. So um, it really changed my life in terms of participating yeah. in that perspective. I think um, travel does. And it's, it's free as well. But that's the common misconception of yeah. like, I, I want to go abroad and volunteer, but perhaps I'll have to contribute towards that. And I don't have the money for a passport, for example. In the, this programme, it's entirely funded and there is um, additional funds there to help young people get those kind of documents. Yeah, totally. What, uh, what are the sort of things uh, on people's young people's agenda in, in uh, Scotland currently, Hugh? What are they uh, getting hot under the collar about or not, as the case may be? I think it's hard not to to look at COVID nineteen. Yeah, I think that's of course. tons of about that. Um, there's been, in terms of Scotland, we've seen some really good initiatives from both the Scottish government and organisations like Young Scot in terms of having Q and As with our like chief medical officer yeah. and young people. Um, I know, for example, that uh, in terms of the prime minister's questions, if you're under eighteen, you can't ask any uh, from the public, which is, uh, from my personal point of view, that's a bit of an oversight. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, um, does it? Yeah, it's been really good for engaging young people in the process, for sure. Yeah, I think that for me, uh, I, you know, I head up a youth team and uh, I thought it was going to be carnage. And what has surprised me is it just hasn't. Young people have adapted really well to it. And when you consider, uh, uh, especially younger teens, are real social beasts, aren't they? You know, they move in herds. You know, it's all about being with your friends and in number. I think they've done really, really well. And I think the, the Mercedes, the sort of view that it would all, they would be the ones that would not cope. They've actually coped really well, haven't they, I think? Yeah, they're an incredibly mobilised kind of demographic of society and I think we do underestimate them. And, yeah. you know, having stuff like solidarity projects, it's about, we talk so much about young people, but we don't necessarily include them in the conversation. Yeah. And uh, something like a solidarity project means that we, you know, we entrust them in giving them these project funds and knowing that they can actually make real change in the community. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, you know, people I know that have been on the Erasmus anything to do with the whole Erasmus and Momentum World have really enjoyed it. But it's just getting those ones that 
wouldn't normally step forward to do that. I think that's the battle ahead. How has lockdown been for you, Hugh? And what have you learned about yourself? And, and what are you going to do? How is uni going to operate? You know, that's a good question. I wish I knew. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. I, I've been furloughed, so I, I can't really complain on that front. But um, I, I did very briefly have a persistent cough and fever. Oh. Um, so obviously you can't really tell I'm on a test or anything. Um, but it wasn't a very pleasant experience. Yeah. And I was glad I was able to, to cope with it and recover. I suppose um, you so, did have it, you know. I think lots of lots of people I talked to said, oh, ages ago in January, I, had a, I didn't have a fever, or but I did have this. And I think more of us have had it than we realise. Uh, I just think there's absolutely no way of telling, is there, at all? Not at all, especially with asymptomatic people. So yeah. you can have it and show any symptoms outwardly. It, it's, it's scary. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Mercedes? How's lockdown been for you and how have you coped? You know, have you enjoyed it? <laughs> You know, um, I it's been quite an it. introspective, yeah, yeah, introspective experience. But it does, it does um, give you some time to take stock and actually just kind of stop for a minute and think about the things that you enjoy and um, trying to integrate them more into your life. So yeah, yeah, I, I haven't reading, hated it like that. Yeah. So I guess finally, it's been lovely talking to you both. I guess finally, I'm going to ask you both just to give out, you know, any contact details if people have been listening and are interested in what you've had to say. So start with you, Hugh. Well, how can people get hold of you and, and Alive? You can find me on Twitter at, at Hugh Sherrard, just my name. And you can find Alive UK at, at Alive underscore UK. And Alive is A-L-Y-V-E, isn't it? A-L-Y-V-E, yeah. yeah. And Mercedes, how can people get in contact with you about the ESC? So we have our UK website. If you search European Solidarity Corps UK, it will pop up. And um, the links to all of our social medias are on that site. We're active on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And if you have any specific queries that you might want some help with, then um, we also operate a helpline, which um, I will be kind of manning. So that's eusolidaritycorps at ecorus.com. Okay, brilliant. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, I will hope you come on again. You know, and we'll talk. We'll see how things change in another month. I, I give up. I gave up trying to overthink it. Who knows where we'll all be in another month? But thank you for the, taking the time to come and speak to us, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. bye. bye.